Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and today we're going to do a software tutorial. We're going to take a look at the software of choice that I use in Six Sigma. We're going to look at SPC Excel. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, welcome to Complexity Made Simple and in this little video uh, tutorial we're going to take a look at the box plot something I haven't covered before uh, using SPC Excel so before we go to the software we're gonna have a little talk about what what the box plot would be used for sort of what it is and then we'll go just take a look the software tutorial like all the software tutorials in SPC Excel very very simple to do so no pain that you get with using Minitab, but this is in Excel and it's really simple to do. So let's have a little look. The box plot, it's similar to uh, the multivary. So I've done tutorials on the multivary chart previously. And of course, the multivary, you're going to take multiple data points. Three is the minimum. Yeah, so three data points. Where you've measured the same feature on a component. So if you were measuring the, the moisture content on a web of woven material, you would measure the moisture content in three places. The left side, the right side, and the center. And then using those three data points the multivary can be drawn and you would get the maximum you would get the minimum and dead center you would get the average the max the min and the average and that's the multivary version of this now the box plot on the other hand well I can't do the box plot with three data points. The box plot is a minimum five data points. So that's one of the reasons why I tend to cover the multivary more than I, I cover the box plot. Now, what do you see when you get a box plot? Well, by the nature of what it's saying, you're going to get a box like this. Now the box is the middle 50% of your data. That's where the middle 50% is falling in your data set. You also get a little bit of a whisker sticking out the top there. That of course at the top is going to be the maximum. Get an equivalent whisker at the bottom. That's going to be the minimum. And on the SPC Excel software, what you also get is a midpoint marked on here. Now, the midpoint is not the average. With the box plot, you get the median value. Okay, you get the median value. I think part of the reason why you get the median value, this technique is used for large data sets great for large data sets and the thing about it is that if you if you calculated the average and this maximum for instance was a complete flyer and it was pulling the average dramatically up then of course you would see the average sitting in completely the wrong place and then you'd have to pour through maybe 4,000 data points to find the one that's doing that and to correct it so the median for large data sets is a better number. It's more stable. You don't have to tidy up all the flyers out of your data set if you use the median. And the likelihood is that the box plot is for large data sets. So when I say that, what might you be doing? Well, you might be measuring, let's say, let's say you're measuring the gases going up a flue. You're measuring them once every 10 seconds. It's a continuous process. So you're measuring every 10 seconds all day. 
you will end up with literally thousands of data points for each day. A simple way to see that, because obviously trying to represent that data, could you represent that on a run chart? Well, no, because this run chart probably, you know, 4,000 data points long each day that you use it. Makes no sense to use a run chart. The box plot, on the other hand, you could easily put 40 of these boxes on a diagram for the last 40 days and you would see a representation of the maximum gas level that you've seen, the minimum gas level that you've seen, you'd see the average as well, you'd see the day-to-day -day variability. So it's a great thing to do for large data sets. Another one you might use it for, let's have a think. Uh, let's say you're, you're making food and you've got the weight checker. It checks every every item that you produce to make sure it's not underweight. Again, you could produce 10,000 units a day very easily. And then you might want to see what was the maximum, what was the minimum, what was the middle value. And again, seeing that in, in as a run chart makes no sense. Seeing it as a box plot is a great, simple summarization. And you can look day to day how you're doing with your weight giveaway and things like that. So large data sets. So that was that's that that's the real that's the real use for it. It's summarizing large data sets for you so that you can see you can think statistically. You can see the middle, you can see the spread, you can see the median, you can see the standard deviation or the range on these charts. So let's go across to Excel. Let's pick up some uh, data and let's show you how the box plot works in the software. It really is very, very easy. Okay, here we are. You can see the data here is in the yellow fields. The data set that I'm going to use is a very simple data set. It's a data set that I've put together in the past just to show you how a control chart would work. Um, so there's just uh, five, five data points per subgroup per sample subgroup and then there's 25 subgroups and i'm gonna i'm gonna represent this on uh, a block a box plot uh, diagram instead of doing uh, an x bar r chart i could do an x bar r chart but the x bar r chart is not going to show you the data in the same way that the box plot will so we're going to take a look at it and then we're going to have a look at some patterns that you wouldn't see probably in any in any other way other than the box plot. So like all the SPC Excel, I'm gonna highlight the data set. Then I go up to Sigma Zone. I go analysis diagrams. Of course the bottom one there is the box plot. Select that. It does the usual thing and it just lets you check that you've selected the right data set. You click next. It then says to me, well, is your data in rows or columns? Well, I've organized this data in rows. You go next. And then there you go. It plots it plots the box plot for me. So you can see the 25 data sets. And this could represent 25 days worth of data of flue gas, sulfur dioxide content. And you're seeing the within day variability. Of course, you're seeing between day variability. It's a great summarization of potentially thousands and thousands of data points. In this case, it's just five, five per group and 25 groups. So let me just, let's just switch on the, uh, the drawing function here and we'll, um, we'll highlight a couple of, a couple of uh, data points along the way. So if we look here, um, something that I would notice is when the median is not in the center of the data set. So here, look. You'll notice here the median is sitting a little bit low. So this this data point up here, the top one, that's probably a bit of a flyer because of that. Yeah, and it's pulling. It's pulling the the, the middle 50%. It's pulling higher. And it's obviously, normally it would pull the average up. But of course, because this is the median, it's not pulling the median. And that's why it's sitting quite a long way from the median. There's another one here, look. 
this data set here this data point is sitting a long way from the middle there's a good chance that's a flyer as well so you can quickly see that maybe there's been some wild events possibly in that day and then what you might do is go and investigate that individual day now here look there's a there's another one here this data point look is sitting a long way from the from the middle from the median uh, but this time it's the other way it's a it's a low data point compared to where the rest of the data set is sitting so it's giving you indications that maybe something something strange has happened on those days as opposed to data sets like this one look where the middle is in the middle you got the max the mean that looks like a nice normal distribution should i go and look at it um and you'd be able to see that if you if you looked next one over by the way this one don't like this one either look look the minimum and the middle are very close together and this thing is right out of the way so chance that there's a flyer in there but there's the box plot it's a very simple it's a very simple diagram it's very easy to do in SPC Excel and it summarizes often large data sets if you'd like to know more about any of the concepts covered in this video or any of the other concepts covered in my uh, my other tutorial videos then here's my latest book drink tea and read the paper covers everything you need to know about how to make sure that Six Sigma becomes world-class engineering in your company. Otherwise, if you'd like to get in touch with me, a little bit of help about Lean, a little bit of help with Six Sigma, please contact me on the email below. Well, I hope you found that uh, useful. Uh, if you've got any questions about that topic, or indeed anything to do with Six Sigma, or Lean for that matter, Give me a call and I hope to hear from you soon.